Oh, you must be the new battle trainer I've been hearing all about. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Mia. I'm one of the battle trainers here in Ferrum. There's lots to see around here. But don't worry, I'll make sure you know your way around. I battle alongside my trusty partner, Weavile. Have you ever seen a Pokémon this cute? I doubt it. Huh? He was just sleeping over there, but... Where did he go? I'll introduce you guys some other time. Right then, first things first. Welcome to the Ferrum Battle. Working as one with your partner Pokémon and facing off in intense one-on-one -on -one battles is what makes Ferrum Battles great. But first, you'll need this to get started as a battle trainer. Here's your battle AR. When you wear this, you'll be able to synergize with your Pokémon in battle. Your battle AR uses something called a Synergy Stone. There's actually a lot we don't know about them. But hey, we'll get into the details later. Make sure you take care of it. It's so exciting thinking about the brand new journey you're just starting out on. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what sort of trainer you turn out to be. I'll give you whatever assistance I can, so just try to have some fun out there. Right then, let's get you registered. You'll be able to change your partner Pokémon later. For now, choose whichever one feels right for you. This is the Ferrum region, where we are now. It's a huge island surrounded by nothing but the ocean itself. Ferrum battles are super popular here, if you hadn't already guessed. The types of battles differ a bit from city to city, so I'll just give you the short and sweet version. To start off, right now we're here in Old Ferrum Town. It's also known as My Town, and here you can check your battle data and change your settings, stuff like that. Don't worry, whenever we head to a new area, I'll give you the rundown. I've got your back. Next up is right here, Ferrum Stadium. This is where the Ferrum League is held. This is a single player mode where you battle your way to victory in the official league. Next up is Teller Town, I suppose. Here you can join in casual matches against CPU opponents. Did you hear? There have been some strange battles going on at the haunted house recently. Do you think it's because of those rumors saying that you'll get something nice if you battle there? Check it out if you're interested. When you want to battle against your friends, you should head over to Selen Island. There, you can battle using two controllers. If you want to battle with some nearby friends, you can also use local communication. Head to Thaldia Beach if you want to give it a go. And then there's Mayo City, where you can battle against online players from around the globe. You can check out battle replays here too. In Techna City, you can learn all sorts of stuff about battles and practice a bit too. I'll give you a nice little walkthrough in the tutorial. Alrighty then, guess I went on a bit longer than planned, but that should be just about everything. Feel free to start off wherever you want, but... I think you might be best off heading to Techna City to play through the tutorial and learn the basics of Ferrum Battles. We call this energy Gaia. It's something you'll only find here in the Ferrum region. Apparently, there's still a lot we don't understand about it. Here, you can learn about Ferrum battles and practice as much as you see fit. In the tutorial, I'll teach you all about battling from the basics. In free training, you can use a number of settings to practice however you see fit. If you have two controllers, you will also be able to control both characters in training mode. I'd recommend starting off with my tutorial. Oh, right. You can use the pause menu during battle to check your Pokémon's move list. It's pretty useful, so make sure to use it. Which Pokémon are you battling with?
In this course, I'll teach you all about the basics of the game. Now then, what shall we start with? Alrighty, I guess we better start off learning how to move. Go ahead and try moving your Pokémon. You can use the directional buttons to move around the field. You can also jump with the B button. If you press the same direction twice on the directional buttons, you can dash step forward and back or side to side. Let's move on! Next up, we'll learn how to attack. Press this button to use long distance attacks. Long distance attacks are called ranged attacks. Try to land a few ranged attacks. You'll launch an attack that'll chase down your opponent. There you go! Now you're getting it! Alrighty then, now here's the important part. All battles consist of two states, field phase and dual phase. At the start of the battle, where we are right now, is field phase. And this is dual phase. You can tell which phase you're in by checking here. Now then, how do you go about changing phases? Well, you see, if you land a certain type of attack, you'll shift phases. Let's check out this demonstration. Alrighty, now try to shift to dual phase. Try to hit your opponent with this attack. Okay, now you've changed the phase. In dual phase, you can dish out some serious damage, but close quarter combat is risky too. Here's where the real battle goes down, but you'll need to be careful. The way you move around differs a bit from field phase. Let's practice moving around in dual phase. By pressing forward twice on the directional buttons, you can perform a forward dash step. By pressing back twice on the directional buttons, you can perform a backward dash step. You can jump using the B button. In dual phase, the action is highly varied. All right, that should be good. Land a certain attack on your opponent, and you'll shift from dual phase back to field phase. You can also just land a bunch of hits and... Send them flying back into field phase like this. Someone with wits like yours has probably already figured this out, but battles will involve shifting back and forth between field phase and dual phase. Plus, when you cause a phase shift, you'll get a nice little bonus. And by that, I mean you'll fill up your synergy gauge. more about how to use the Synergy Gauge later on. Ah, 
right, I forgot to tell you. You can block by pressing the R button. By blocking, you can all but completely defend against your opponent's attack. Alrighty, let's try to block an attack. Just hold down the R button and you'll be fine. Whenever you're in a pinch, just press the R button. Don't forget. All right, keep an eye right here on the screen. This is your Synergy Gauge. Your Synergy Gauge will fill up as you land or take hits. Once your Synergy Gauge is full, try pressing the L and R buttons together. Your Pokémon used its Synergy Burst. Your Pokémon will be super-powered while it's in Synergy Burst. Wreak havoc with Synergy Burst. You can use a Burst Attack once during every Synergy Burst. Try using a Burst Attack. In this course, I'll tell you all you need to know about battles and teach you some techniques you can put to use right away. Press this to perform a long distance attack aimed forward. It's great because you can use these attacks to shift into dual phase even from a distance. This is what you'll want to strive for in field phase. Try to land a few forward ranged attacks. Press the X button while jumping in field phase and land a hit and you'll cause a phase shift. You'll want to get the timing right just as you jump to dodge an oncoming attack. Try to land a jump attack. Keep it up. During dual phase, if you land a hit with the Y button, press the Y button rapidly. Land consecutive hits to get a combo. This is what we call a Poke Combo. Land a Poke Combo. While you're still getting the hang of battles, make sure to shoot for lots of Poke Combos. A counterattack absorbs an incoming attack and quickly dishes out a counter blow. Time it just right, and you'll be able to strike back at your opponent. You can use counterattacks in both field phase and dual phase. Try to counter your opponent's attack. can break through your opponent's block. Pikachu! 
On top of that, grab attacks are always super effective against counterattacks. That being said, they're not very effective against normal attacks. Use a grab attack on your opponent. Okay! Counter attacks beat normal attacks. Grab attacks beat counter attacks. And normal attacks beat grab attacks. Basically, this attack triangle is like a fancy game of rock, paper, scissors. Trainers who master this attack triangle will take control of the battle. Probably. This thing over here is called the support gauge. Your support gauge will fill up as time passes. And once your support gauge is full, press the L button and try calling in a support Pokémon. It'll come in and use one of its Pokémon moves to help you out. During the planning time before each round, you can switch out the support Pokémon you want to use. You can choose which support Pokémon you want to use from your active support set. You can select a support Pokémon that suits your battle strategy. Or maybe even select a support Pokémon that'll help you out against a particular opponent. Support Pokémon come in three different types. Attack, Disrupt, and Enhance. Attack-type support Pokémon come in handy when you want to deal out damage and push your opponent back. Disrupt-type support Pokémon typically swoop in to block your opponent's movements. Sometimes, they can even counter your opponent's attacks. Enhance-type support Pokémon will power up your Pokémon or heal some of your HP, things like that. Pick a support Pokémon that suits your playstyle, and be sure to use it when the time's right. Sometimes, when you use support Pokémon, your battle Pokémon will receive a status. These statuses include positive statuses and negative statuses. First things first, positive statuses. While you're under the effect of a positive status, you'll get some sort of advantage. For instance, Eevee will give you a positive status that grants you a temporary increase to your attack. Next up, we have negative statuses. Get hit with a negative status and you'll temporarily be at a disadvantage. Take Emolga, for example. He'll hit you with an attack that temporarily reduces your speed. Use these statuses to your advantage to get the lead in battle. Between rounds, I'll drop in to cheer you on. Depending on whether you win or lose a round, your support gauge or your synergy gauge may get a boost. There are several types of cheering you might receive. There are cheer skills that are in effect from the first round, as well as those with special effects. Sometimes during field phase, you'll find power scattered around. You can pick up this power to fill up your synergy gauge. Power on the field will disappear if you don't pick it up after a certain amount of time. Go ahead and pick up the power that appears on the field. The tide 
of the battle can really change depending on where the power appears on the field. Now, let me tell you a bit about each battle Pokémon's recommended actions. Why don't you try this out? Give this a shot. In this course, I'll teach you a few techniques that should help you out in battle. During dual phase, press down on the directional buttons to enter into a low stance. While in low stance, press the Y button to use a quick attack. Press the X button while in low stance to use an attack to knock down your opponent. Try to land an attack from low stance. It doesn't matter what kind. By pressing up on the directional buttons, your Pokémon will take a high stance. By pressing the Y button in a high stance, you can perform an intercepting attack on an airborne opponent. In a high stance, you can press the X button to use an attack that will parry low to the ground attacks. Try to use an attack from a high stance. charge up your counterattack. It'll take some time to charge, but you'll deal more damage and you'll also get a combo for managing to land a hit. By charging up your counterattack, you can increase the amount of time you can ward off your opponent's attacks. Try to charge up a counterattack. attack, use the directional buttons and R button to cancel and move into a dash step. This is simply called a cancel. You can use counterattacks to deflect your opponent's attacks and then cancel. Try to cancel a counterattack. are special moves that cannot be blocked by counterattacks. For example, counterattacks with a fully charged hold become piercing attacks. Your best bet with counterattacks is to take the initiative and get the first move in. In field phase, you can also hold the last hit of a homing attack to make it a piercing attack.
Your Pokémon won't take any hits while knocked down. And it'll get back up on its own, too. But this will give your opponent the chance to move in for an attack. So you'll need to be careful. Depending on the attack, you may take some damage regardless of whether you had your block up or not. This is called block damage. But you'll never be KO'd by block damage. If you keep blocking against an attack, you'll notice that the block will start to turn red. If you don't release it, you'll eventually get hit with a guard break. When you're hit with a guard break, you'll be left momentarily defenseless. How many attacks you can endure before getting hit with a guard break depends on the Pokémon. Blocking is important, there's no doubt about it. But try not to get hit with a guard break. While in Synergy Burst, you won't be stunned from taking a few small hits. So you can move in for the attack without worrying about your opponent's ranged attacks one bit. Try to hit an opponent using a ranged attack with a homing attack. Getting it? When your opponent uses their Synergy Burst, you'll want to try to use the X button for strong attacks to stun them, or grab attack to try to stop them from getting in any attacks. You can link up one attack with the next. This is what we call a combo. Let's try to land a simple combo. First off, try out this comp. noticed that battle Pokemon all have different amounts of HP, right? On top of that, how quickly the Synergy Gauge fills up and how long a Synergy Burst lasts also differ from one Pokemon to the next. Crazy, right? There are all sorts of different battle stages, and the battle arenas themselves vary slightly in shape and size. Battle Pokémon all have their strengths and weaknesses, and you'll have to be ready to switch up your fighting style from time to time. As you battle, your Pokémon will increase its skill level. As you increase your skill level, you can apply those skill points to whichever skills you'd like. As your skills level up, you'll get all sorts of useful advantages in battle. Remember, you can switch out your skill points from my town whenever you want. Tutorial finish. Use your Pokemon.
If you hold the last hit of a homing attack, it will cause your opponent to guard break. When a guard break occurs in field phase, it will cause a phase shift. Use a charged up homing attack and cause a guard break. When you're up against an opponent with a tough block, charge up a homing attack to shake them up. During dual phase, there are actions you can use that quickly link up Pokémon moves. This is also a type of cancel. By using cancels, you'll be able to freely link up your actions. And based on the type of Pokémon move, you may also be able to deal consecutive hits. Try to cancel this action and land consecutive hits with a Pokémon move. Your opponent has pinned you down with repeated ranged attacks. In times like these, you should try jumping to ward off their attacks. If your opponent is close enough when you jump, you can strike back during the opening in their ranged attack. If you find timing your jumps right to be too tricky, you can always try a block and try to move in closer for an attack. Ranged attacks can be a real pain, huh? The way they chase after you like that. It's times like these you can use a step technique to negate their homing abilities. Use some well-timed steps to avoid an incoming ranged attack. During dual phase, when your opponent launches a powerful attack while jumping, you can use anti-air actions to effectively intercept their attack. When in a high stance, you can press the Y button to use anti-air actions. Use the Y button while in a high stance to intercept an incoming jump attack. There you go. Now you're getting it. If you block against an attack that leaves a big opening, it will give you the chance to strike back. If you launch your attack fast enough, the opponent will be left unable to block against it. Pull it off, and you're guaranteed to deal some damage. Block against your opponent's incoming attack and swiftly strike back. By knocking your opponent's battle Pokémon into the wall, you'll leave them open for some follow-up attacks. By effectively using the walls, you can unleash some actions that normally only knock down your opponent and deal some massive damage. Try to land some wall combos. Pokemon. 
In close combat, it's important to understand what the situation will be like after each attack. For instance, after you land one of your moves, you usually have a small window of time where you can move while your opponent is still stunned. Which means you can move in for another attack. On the other hand, if your opponent uses a block against you, they'll be able to make their next move before you can. Your best bet in such situations is to keep your cool and just use a block. It might also be a good idea to try to pull off a counterattack. Also, when your attack misses its mark, you'll be left completely open to your opponent. So make sure to try to only use attacks at a distance you know will hit your opponent. If you're pressed up against the wall when a phase shift from dual phase to field phase occurs, you'll be blasted off the walls like this. You'll take some damage when this happens. But I guess if you think of it as your chance to break away from the wall and reposition yourself, it doesn't really seem so bad. If it gets launched by a powerful attack, your Pokémon will automatically perform a mid-air recovery. After a mid-air recovery, it will be temporarily invulnerable to attacks. Press forward on the directional buttons when this happens, and you can change the direction of its mid-air recovery. While you're falling back down, you can also use the directional buttons to slightly change the direction of your fall. When two ranged attacks collide, the stronger of the two may completely negate the other. <laughs> If both are at about the same level, they will cancel each other out. <laughs> when you know you can't beat your opponent in a clash of ranged attacks, it's best to just block or jump to dodge those attacks. You know, you can actually recover some of the damage you take. When you take damage, the dark green section shown is recoverable HP. You can recover this recoverable HP by causing a phase shift. You can also recover this recoverable HP by using Synergy Burst or via the effects of support Pokémon. Don't forget that during Synergy Burst, you will gradually recover your recoverable HP. <laughs> Keep in mind that you can also lose recoverable HP. If your opponent causes a phase shift while you're in field phase, you'll lose some of your recoverable HP. To attack while jumping, such as by pressing the X button while in high stance, you'll be able to launch your attacks while avoiding low ground level attacks. In that same style, anti-air actions will easily win over higher placed attacks. No matter which case, the point is that both, when matched up, will have the unilateral advantage over the other. I'm sure I've already told you how battle stages come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but the terms that determine how synergy power appears differ between battle arenas too.
If you take the time to study the stages themselves, you'll be able to use the terrain to your advantage. Tutorial finished.